Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to compare two different DK weight 100% superwash merino yarn bases. One of them is 12 ply high twist and the other is I think 4 ply and much loftier, much more relaxed. And I'm curious how some different low immersion and speckling techniques might look different on the two bases that have otherwise similar fiber contents. Yes, they're milled differently, the bases are created from different companies, but I'm curious, so let's take a look. Today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly is sponsored by Ada. And I know that she loves the Knit Picks Swish DK yarn base, and that she loves the Filitor de Crosa Zara yarn base. So I thought it would be fun, since she told me to pick the yarn for her, to play with both in today's video. If you would like to learn more about how you as a viewer can sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, you can find more details in the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I'll have a link in the video description and in the top right hand corner of your screen. One thing that I think will be especially interesting is that the Zara base is a little more stretched out in the raw form um, and it plumps up and is this really full, round, twisty yarn once it is dyed. The Swiss yarn might have been pre-washed already, so it'll look pretty much like this once it is dry. So I'm curious if we'll see speckles seem closer together, if the yarn might look more glazed, we will see as we go about the process. Full disclosure, I do have affiliate marketing relationships with both Knit Picks and Filatura di Crosa, and they both happen to be running some sales on Bare Yarn right now. I'll have details about all of this in the video description as well. This video is not sponsored by either company. It is my choice to do this in comparison and create this video. I am pre-soaking all of the bare yarn in some plain tap water for at least 30 minutes. And even though all the yarn already has some ties on it, I added some removable nylon zip ties. Uh, I really like doing this because it makes it easier to move the yarn throughout the whole process. Today we are going to be playing with the combination of Tangelo, Deep Magenta, and Teal Green again. I am so excited to give these colors another shot and another go. I loved the way they played off of one another when we created that self-striping yarn a couple of weeks ago. Unfortunately, it looks like my surface light has burnt out, but hopefully we'll still be able to see pretty well. In this pan, I have eight cups of water, and I'm gonna add three tablespoons of white vinegar right off the bat. Give it a quick little stir. I am going to be adding dry powder in here. I am going to place our two skeins in the pan. I've got the Swish DK up here and the Zara down here. This setup is low-ish immersion. There's some places where dye could strike the water before it strikes the yarn, which will allow the colors to spread out and we're in a four inch deep hotel steamer pan um, and across two burners. I do have all the tools and things that I use in this video. I've linked to all that in the video description. Off to the side, I have a pre-wet, I didn't really soak it, I just put it under the faucet for a minute, skein of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. This is not been in any vinegar yet and I will be using it as a yarn mop today I will be wiping my hands on this skein and then well we'll do something a little interesting towards the end with our mop since we're dealing with dry powder today I will be wearing my respirator mask safety glasses and gloves even if I don't mention it in the video I'm always 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 wearing this if I'm dealing with dry powder in addition to wiping off the excess dye on my gloved fingers onto our yarn mop, I will be rinsing and drying them off in between each color so I can try to limit the introduction of moisture into our stock jars. Because if you started to get moisture in here, then things could clump up. And I took a bit of powder and 
and now we're going for it. Uh, I get questions all the time about why I like to speckle using my fingers, why I don't um, put it in a salt shaker, and I prefer the tactile feel. I feel like I have control over where the colors land. Now, as you can see, with this technique we're doing today, the colors will spread. And that is what we are seeing here. Um, we're seeing spread of some of the colors. If you want sharper speckles, I recommend mixing your dye with some citric acid powder, uh, even if you're gonna do it on the countertop and steam, or if you're gonna do it in a low immersion situation like this. But now I have wiped off my gloves, and you can see we got most of that dye off, but I am gonna rinse off and dry. You can aliquot the dye into some like little containers. I reuse some cups and I do that sometimes if I'm gonna be using a lot of the same dye colors over the course of the day. But then you end up with excess extra dye, which can be great for a leave no dye behind situation. But that's not always what we are aiming to do. Okay, so now I'm coming in with some of this deep magenta and I'm trying to be even lighter. I want there to be space for that teal to work in here. The teal I think will be a darker feeling color overall and so I think that it could work really well all together. With this type of technique one spot to play a little extra attention to are the edges. Um, and we'll go back in and we'll be flipping and moving the yarn around throughout this whole process. But we're actually not ending up with a ton of color on our mop so far, because my hands have remained fairly clean. The one problem with these deeper containers is it's just a bit harder to get your fingers in there. Um, yeah. Now I've got the teal, and I'm not like specifically aiming for white patches because there's only, even with this tactile approach, there's only so much you can aim the colors, but that is what I'm trying to do. I'm like hovering over the bigger white patches and letting the dye sort of fall into place. Now, in general, I think at least for me and different people might feel differently, I find that my speckles on the countertop tend to be sharper, even if I'm doing straight dye powder. If you look at, goodness, I don't know if it was Dye Pelt Weekly 184, I think I'll put it in the iCard so it'll be on the top right hand corner of the screen. In that one, I was using dry powder on the countertop and the speckles are super, super sharp. So it all just really depends on if the dye can spread out or not. But I think that this is really, really pretty. Right now, we have a choice on how we can proceed. We can move things right away and move and then add more color or we can wait and give these colors time to set. I have a feeling that they're probably setting pretty quickly. If I press down, we're not seeing a bunch of color come up, but there could be pockets where the dye might still be a little more damp and still need to sink in. So personally, I'm in favor of giving this a shot to sit back and wait and see what happens. So I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes uh, before we flip. And man, I do miss my light. Oh, I don't wanna deal with getting it replaced. Although I suppose it makes sense that the light bulb would burn out given that I probably use that cooktop light more than a standard person. <laughs> anyway, I'll be back once the timer goes off. Okay, let's flip this over and you can see that we do have some color coverage here on the reverse side not 
speckles, clearly, but there has been spread. And this is our electrolytic cross-off. And yeah, we also see spread here. Now, I might end up wanting to do some light speckles on the inside, because even though they're spread, I still want the speckles all over. Oh man, I'm not good at swapping <laughs> with these types of projects, but I am now going to speed things up so that way you can see what happens. Once again, I started speckling with my fingers, starting with tangelo and then going into deep magenta, followed by the teal green. In between each color, I wiped my fingers on my yarn mop and then rinsed and dried them before going into the other containers. And I waited 10 minutes before moving that yarn around a bit more to expose new areas and then just decide if I needed more speckles in other spots. I definitely noticed in the second round that my fingers were getting a little steamy. Um, so I did reduce the heat even more to try to keep the moisture off of my fingers. The other thing to note is that since I don't cover my pans, which you could, you can get lids for them or use tin foil to trap the heat and moisture in, the moisture level goes down over time. So in the second and third rounds, there is more exposure of the yarn at the surface to the dye, which can allow you to get some sharper speckles. This can be achieved by starting with even less water in the pan if you want. Um, thankfully, I have never burned anything before, but you do want to keep an eye on your water level if you're doing really, really low amounts of water. The final flip barely needed any color at all. I really just added some bits and pieces in some areas that I felt needed more, but I'm just so excited with how this colorway is coming together. It's always hard to know exactly what you want to do when you're going to play with dry powder like this, and I love to let the colors really speak to me. And I'm really excited. I think that this is really like fun and party-ish, and it works so well. <sighs> and now I'm going to raise the heat just a hair. For these final 10 minutes, we might actually go a little longer than 10 minutes, just to let make sure that all of this final color is completely set. And the thing that is so cool with the Zara yarn is that right now I would say the two skeins look very, very similar. But what I learned previously is the Zara yarn actually really, really shrinks up once it dries. It's not really shrinking, it's more that the twist is being properly set. So I'm curious if that'll give it a substantially different feel. Because right now in the pan, they look very, very similar to one another. Here is how our yarn mop is looking right now. It is beautiful on its own with these patches of color randomly placed. If it had been pre-soaked in vinegar, I would be tempted to just steam set it. But what we're going to do is actually immerse this in some warm water and let these colors maybe spread and blend or yeah, we'll see what happens. But I thought that that would be pretty fun. Let's add some more water. Um, I'm not planning on adding more vinegar because I think the colors are pretty well set, but I am going to add another eight cups of water to the pan just to make sure all dye has dissolved. If there's a clump sitting on the surface of the yarn, it could just be wet sitting there. So this will just help. And I'm going to add four more cups. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to turn up the heat just to get things going. But I'm not seeing spread. Yeah, I'm not seeing spread in here at all. I'm going to raise the heat and leave the yarn in here for another 10 minutes just to be sure, but then we will remove this and set it aside to cool. Okay, we are nice and hot. I am going to reduce the heat and the timer was two seconds away from going off. I am removing this yarn with my tongs and the water is clear. I need a new set of tongs. These are starting to break and I don't know if the same ones exist in the same way anymore. 
I just picked up a bunch more of these foil pans from Costco. All right, yarn mop time. We still have acid in here. Not a lot, but some. And let's just start moving this. I'm curious if we'll see spread. It looks like not a lot of spread. Looks like things, I think maybe because they were spread out. There was no acid in this skein at first. Okay, there's definitely some spread. I think that it just, the yarn might just be catching the spread locally pretty quickly. Um, and, hmm, I want to rinse out that tiny bit of color in here. Tiny bit of color here in the pan down towards the more white area. But this is pretty. Random, pretty, and softer than a lot of the yarn mops. And honestly, it's a little faster than steaming too. <laughs> Not that that's ever like a big concern for me or anything like that. Um, but this is so pretty. Okay, I am gonna let this heat for 10 minutes here in the pan. Then we'll set it aside to cool and then wash everything all together once everything's cool. Oof, Ada, these colors. I'm so glad you requested that I play with these colors again because, well, I mean, I wanted to anyway. <laughs> it's like you read my mind. Uh, I also have a feeling, based on some Instagram posts, you won't be surprised with the yarn base that I picked for you. But at first look, I am seeing no bleeding. Oh, these colors are so awesome and I yeah I'm just excited I want to know how different they they might look um, so the Zara skein is already just shorter than the than the Swish DK one um, but uh, it definitely has not sort of contracted back all the way yet um, so I am just curious. I think that the speckles could get even denser, maybe, or it could have just like a completely different look. So I am excited. I don't think I'm going to show you the yarn straight out of the spin dryer like I did in my first Zara video. I think I'm going to finish rinsing out the soap and when I come back next, the yarn will be dry. Let me show you the yarn right now close up so here is our Zara which you can see is tighter and you can see a little bit of the definition already and here is our swish so right now they feel very similar the differences are pretty subtle on camera both skeins fluffed up a lot with the drying. And so there isn't necessarily like a bigger shrinkage, I think from one versus the other. But I notice a difference between the speckles on our Zara base versus our Swish DK. And I think that if you look for the teal colored speckles, you can see the difference the most. Okay, so here we have our Zara and here's our Swish. The speckles, since the yarn on the Zara I think was more stretched out and it snapped back to be this more round, higher twist, the speckles all feel a little less spread out now on the Zara, which wasn't the case when it was dyed, but it's because of the way it fluffs up with the drying. Go back towards the beginning of the video if you don't remember of how stretched the fibers were, but look at just this twist and the roundness and the bounce in this raw white Zara yarn. Well, I guess it's not raw white anymore, but this was the raw white Zara yarn base. If this base interests you, I do have a coupon code with Filatura di Crosa. You can use the code Chemnitz at checkout to get 10% off your raw white Zara purchase. And if you buy two packs, so if you buy a total of 10 skeins, you can actually even get free international shipping. Both of these deals are available while supplies last, but this base is delightful. Which isn't to say that the Swish DK isn't delightful as well. I love, 
love the way this colorway is and it also fluffs up and it's nice and bouncy but you can tell that the twists are a bit more open and so while I don't think there was necessarily more spread on it to begin with uh, I think that the extra like snap back or setting of the twist of the Zara here made a lot of the speckles seem smaller let me know down in the comments if you notice a difference I think it's really hard for it to pick up on camera, but our specs are feeling so much smaller here um, on the Zara than they do on our uh, Swish DK. And here's a spot. I just found a spot where I think it also shows up really well. Look at these itsy bitsy teeny weeny speckles. These are so, so tiny. And we've got some tiny ones here on the Swish. They just aren't and here's some even some small pink ones but even the teeny tiny ones there's a difference in the size the sourcing of the merino and the mills and everything are very different I don't think that this is about color striking faster on the Zara I think it's about the twist and so I think the specs were just as large when we first dyed it because of that extra twist that we set that's why they appear so much smaller as for our yarn mop, it is looking nice, soft, and pretty. I really think I want to explore more with adding dry powder onto yarn and then somehow immersion dyeing it. This feels, I mean, there's brightness in here, but it feels so soft because those edges have just blended out. And even though we do still have some speckles in here, it is so much softer than what we often see when we do yarn mops in this way. And I think it was the, rather than steam setting it, it was just adding it to the immersion bath. Ada Lai, thank you so, so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pop Weekly. In case you couldn't tell, clearly I am sending you the Zara. I know Ada loves Swish DK, and I found out from Instagram that she also enjoys using Zara. So I thought that it would be fun since you told me to pick a yarn base for you, that this would be perfect. The other skeins of yarn? Well, they'll end up in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. If you love the yarn I dye in these videos and want to bring it home, it's a great way to support the content on the channel and get beautiful hand-dyed yarn at the same time. You can find a link to the shop in the video description and in the top right hand corner of the screen. I am not done playing with this color combination, not by a long shot. Uh, there are more techniques that I want to try. Originally, I did want to do a little more in this video and play around with these colors and how to combine them a little more, but I think I'm gonna need to save that for another video. As you know, uh, schools are closed at the moment, and so some of my dyeing time is a little more limited. Thankfully, I have a lot of pre-filmed content that just needs to be edited and finished. So I will be releasing videos every Tuesday and Friday mornings at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time until further notice. I do think that even with limited time to dye yarn, I will be able to keep the content going for a long time. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you never miss any new videos. I would like to thank again Ada for sponsoring this video and all of you for supporting the content I do here. Um, I wish everyone lots of health during this time and I hope that I can provide a little joy and entertainment through playing with some colors. So thank you everyone so much for watching.